Hey guys, what's up? This is RhinoHorn18 here today, and I've got a Black Ops gameplay for you guys. Now, my last video was uh, also a shotgun video, and this one is going to be too. You can see I'm here using the Mac 11, but quickly switched the stakeout here. And I also switched my class, so I'm going to be using the stakeout. So, the class setup I'm using is Marathon, Lightweight, and Steady Aim. And I think I'm using the kill streaks something chopper gunner and dogs as probably a blackbird because that's my typical setup because this was from a while ago also as like my last commentary because as you know PSN is still down and I just fell there on the triple kill feed that would have been really cool if I got there got that but I didn't so yeah PlayStation Network is still down it's been down for a really long time now and they put it back up yesterday morning and this is real news I'm not I was watching a video and this is this was on the news it went up and then within 10 minutes it got hacked again so they shut down the network once again and this means that there's still no PlayStation Network and so I can't get another gameplay so this is an old one that I haven't posted yet and I really don't want to re-upload other gameplays because that's pretty boring to watch so this is a different episode though I'm gonna be giving you guys today I'm going to be telling you guys some scary stories that I found because I thought that would be pretty interesting and a cool commentary. I've never seen anyone tell a scary story in a commentary, so um, I'm just going to read this one right here. And I might make this a series if you guys like this. If I get 10 likes, then I'll make another one. So this is the first story. It's called Drip, Drip, Drip. And one night, a young girl, Lily Foster, is left alone for the night in her country house while her parents drove out to town for a party. This was fine with Lily, especially since she had her faithful dog, Scout, protecting her throughout the night. She made herself something to eat and sat down at the kitchen table. Turning on the radio to her, to her favorite station, she was surprised to hear a news bulletin declaring that an, an avenged murderer was on the loose. It advised that people secure all windows and doors as a safety precaution. With her dog by her side, the young girl locked the front and back doors. She went from window to window, from window to window and locked each of them one at a time. She reassured herself that she would be fine with her trusty dog, and that her parents would be home shortly anyway. So Lily had a pleasant, peaceful evening, and her finally decided around 11 o'clock that it was time for bed. She climbed the stairs to her bedroom and slid under the big, warm blanket on her bed. Before closing her eyes, she reached down, she reached her hand down under the bed and allowed the, her dog to lick it. She did this every night because it comforted her. A short while later, she awoke to the sound of a scratching noise at her bedroom window. She eyed the window and remembered that the whole house was locked and she was safe. She stuck her hand under the bed and felt her dog's slobbery tongue, slobbery tongue across her palm of her hand. She sighed and went back to sleep. An hour or so later, she sat up in bed. She heard footsteps in the hallway and crept out of bed to see if it was possibly just her parents returning from their party. Seeing nothing, she had returned to bed. As she was about to stick her hand under the bed, she heard a drip, 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 followed by some footsteps. She walked downstairs into the kitchen and secured the taps. That surely wasn't the source of the drip. She crept, up, crept upstairs and climbed into bed. This is, sh this is silly, she told herself. I'm probably just imagining things. <coughs> she stuck her hand under the bed and felt the dog lick her hand. An hour later, she awoke again. A little mad at this point, she jumped out of bed. The dripping, dripping wasn't coming from the kitchen, so it must be from the bathroom. She crept along the side of the hallway and walked into the bathroom. She groped along the side of the wall with her left hand, looking for the switch. She flicked the light on and gasped. There, hanging from the shower rod, was Scout. Skinned and a pool of blood had formed on the bathroom tile with a continuous drip, drip, drip as the blood from the dog hit the ground. Something on the wall caught her eye. Written on the wall was a message in blood. Humans can lick too. Alright, so that was a really kind of creepy story. It was uh, basically saying, if you didn't understand, that it was, the murderer was under her bed licking her hand the whole time because the murderer had hung her dog and she kept reassuring herself, but it was really him. So that was pretty creepy. And I've heard it before, so I looked it up and thought I'd tell you guys that one. And I'm going to read another story right now. And this story is called Reflection. So this one's also pretty good. So here it goes. One cold winter night, 16-year-old Kelly Sanders was at home, alone. As her parents had gone out to a dinner party at a friend's house, it had been snowing all afternoon, but had just recently stopped. After studying for a while, she decides to relax a little after all. She finally had the house to herself. She makes some popcorn, 
gets a nice warm fuzzy blanket and snuggles under it to watch one of her favorite movies. In their lounge room, the television is positioned a few feet in front of the glass sliding door that leads to the patio and backyard. By midnight, Kelly's parents are still not home, and she begins to feel uneasy, but refuses to call them, for risk of sounding like she couldn't take care of herself. Suddenly, her eyes catch a glint, a glint of light from behind the TV, and right there, just outside the door, was a crazy-eyed man grinning maliciously at her and holding a narrow, long blade in his left hand. Terrified, the girl panics, pulls the blanket up over her head, and grabs the cordless phone by her side. Kelly calls the police, and as luck would have it, there was a pul patrol car less than a block from her house. In a matter of seconds, the two officers are on the scene, and Kelly tells them about the armed man staring through the glass. The first officer opens the sliding door and looks around the area. After a few moments, she turns and explains to Kelly that there couldn't have been anyone standing out there as there would have been footprints in the snow. The second officer tells her that she was probably just tired and her imagination was playing tricks on her. He beckoned at the TV where the horror movie she had been watching was still playing. Stuff like that didn't happen, didn't help matters either, he said smiling. Kelly smiled too, more at her own maturity than the officer's remark still a little shaken. As the police are about to leave, the male officer stops and looks behind the sofa that Kelly had been sitting on. His jaw drops and wi eyes widen in shock. Kelly hadn't seen the man outside the door. She'd seen his reflection when he was standing right behind her. And I wish there was a better ending to that, but it is pretty creepy if you think about it. So if you guys like this commentary, then please make sure to leave a comment saying if you want another episode of this. And please leave a like, because 10 likes equals more scary stories. Alright, see you guys. Peace.